This week on Latitudes, we leave the tropics behind for a search of some of the world's best theme parks and rides. We chill out in Finland at an amazing minus 32 degrees while exploring this natural wonderland. Train buffs the world over will enjoy our excursion to Kenya, where we ride the world's heaviest steam locomotive. From the wilds of Africa, we travel to a tranquil English village to explore a very unique tourist attraction, that of teapot manufacture. It's another day of minus 32 degrees Celsius in Rovaniemi, Finland. While hundreds of thousands of tourists are looking for warmth and packing for sunny beaches around the world, some holiday makers decide to try something a little different and unique. A holiday in the Arctic Circle in Finland requires layers of warm clothes and the ability to receive only a few hours of sunshine per day. Lapland Safari Company is taking adventure travellers into the Arctic Circle while focusing on the preservation of nature. The mode of transport is snowmobiles and trekking by foot to very remote locations. Lapland Safari's aim is to gain a certification which demonstrates the company's ability to maintain high standards of ecological conservation when bringing tourists into wilderness areas. Nature-based tourism, which revolves around activities where nature is the main attraction, is very well developed in Finland and is expected to become even more popular in the future. Base camps have been set up from which excursions are planned. Children seem to take to the reindeers and sleds. Accommodation is a cross between igloo and tent. Log cabins are also used. Mainly marketed to adventure lovers, the holidays are designed around families as well. And Christmas time is a real hit with the children. Thermometers are placed around the camp so tourists can at all times check the temperature which is in the extremely cold range. However, with the right clothing and equipment, the temperature does not pose a problem. It becomes a matter of curiosity. All provisions for the travellers are bought in and all garbage is taken out of the area. Even the firewood for heating and cooking is brought into the camp via snowmobile. According to the Finnish Tourist Board, about half of the country's visitors come to explore its preserved nature. The Worldwide Fund for Nature and Finnish nature conservationists hope that sustainable nature-based tourism will allow larger areas of natural beauty to be protected from commercial exploitation. One concern to the Lapland Safari Company is the noise of the snowmobiles and they are working with snowmobile manufacturers to address this. As far as holidays go, some people have described this adventure as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to experience the wilderness of the Arctic Circle. During the Christmas period, children are encouraged to keep an eye out for Santa's reindeers, which are also known to live in this area. In fact, Santa also lives in this region and while you're in Rovaniemi, a visit to Santa Park is a must. The theme park can be best described as a family entertainment centre. The central plaza contains the roundabout of life and a clock counting down the time until next Christmas. Other attractions include a round ride customised to suit Christmas and an exciting ride taking children on a sleigh trip through the most rugged of Finland's natural landscapes and the seasons of the year and finally to Santa's workshop where the elves are busy with their tasks. Among the attractions of Santa Park are a theatre with a multivision display and other visual effects. Each year close to a million letters addressed to Saint Nick wind up at Santa's main post office in Santa's village. Another great Finnish theme park for children is Moomin World. 
The park is modelled around the successful children's books. If you spot Moom and Troll and Sniff playing hide and seek with Little Mai, join in the game. There's plenty of fun to be had by all. The Moomin world can be experienced by doing, living, seeing and touching. The park is a fairy tale that children can step right into. At Moomin World, the children can visit many of the places they've read about in the Moomin stories. The Moomin World is a fantastic theme park where any kind of stress and bad mood will soon evaporate and be replaced by joy, laughter and feeling good. This wonderland is set on the beautiful island of Kalo. There are plenty of rides and in summer swimming and boating are also favourite activities. During winter, mini snowmobiles are available for the kids to play on. Finland is a land for all seasons and in other episodes we will return to this wonderland of a country. This is the National Railway Museum in York, England. If you even have mild interest in trains, this is a must-see. The museum recently added another reason for you to consider a visit. One of the great trains of the world. The first Japanese bullet train, or Shinkansen, which travels at speeds of up to 187.5 mile per hour. Since its unveiling, the bullet train has been a great favourite with both locals and overseas visitors. At the time of its conception, the bullet train was considered a technological marvel. Even today, it still looks space age, and it's hard to believe that the train was launched as far back as 1964. It arrived in Britain after a 10,000 mile sea journey from Japan, and is the first foreign built railway vehicle to enter the national collection. Ironically, this extraordinary train first ran at the same time as Britain was just beginning to phase out steam locomotives. After a ceremonial drink of sake, the bullet train officially became part of the world's greatest train museum. In Kenya, rail enthusiasts that still crave a steam experience can now board the world's largest and heaviest steam locomotive. The train has been out of service for 13 years. The train has been reinstated for two reasons. One is for general work and the second is to entice tourists into the area. Mount Gelai is one of the most powerful steam engines ever built for meter gauge. It was among 34 locomotives that first went into service in Kenya in 1955. Fittingly, the 34 locomotives were named after the highest peaks in East Africa and became known as the Mountain Class. They were phased out in the 1970s and in the early 1990s they were cut up for scrap, however two survived. After the decision was made to put Mount Gelai back into service, it took three months of renovation work to bring her back into working order. Pensioners had to be called up from retirement to help with the work and run the locomotive. It was a long haul for the restorers. Today, this massive fire-breathing iron monster brings smiles to both the generation who can remember riding steam trains and to today's children who experience for the first time the shrills of steam and all the other noises, smells and mechanical clatter that make up the magic of steam locomotion. The locomotive is used for a special safari steam service on the Mombasa Voe line, which was built by colonialists. The line opened up the East African interior. Eco Farm, a locally incorporated tour company, coordinated the renovation of Mount Gelai.
So far, the exercise has been a great success. The revival of the steam engine has aroused great interest among train enthusiasts worldwide. Now you can see the African countryside and wildlife from a classic train, which is proving to be a great combination for tourists. For train travellers, the line between Nairobi Mombasa is one of the most famous tracks on earth. A great railway journey comparable to Europe's Orient Express, Australia's Ghan train or India's Raj era palace on wheels. And anyone who has seen the opening scenes of the much loved 1985 film of Karen Blixen's Out of Africa will recall the unforgettable image of a steam train travelling across the vast plains of Tsavo. The train takes two days to cross the vast plains of Savo, a wilderness larger than Jamaica. The daylight journey sees the train descending from 1800 metres to sea level, with an overnight stop at Kibwezi, which is spent on board in sleeper compartments. Along the way, there are onboard lectures from the safari organisers and Kenya railway staff, who will also answer questions on the historical importance of this mighty train. If you're looking for something different, this is certainly a trip to consider. Thousands of people daily are now visiting Japan's biggest theme park, Disney Sea. The attraction is Disney's latest venture in Japan and is located next to Tokyo's Disneyland. Look closely and you may find Mickey Mouse dressed in a captain's uniform and other popular Disney characters dancing around or posing for pictures for Disney fans. At first glance, the new Disney park with an ocean theme could be a port city in Italy. But the moment you hop on the transit steamer which chugs around the park, you soon believe you are on the US East Coast in the early 1900s. The park appeals to the Japanese who have a special interest in the sea which surrounds the islands they live on. The park has about 33 attractions, which are spread across 176 acres. All except the Indiana Jones ride are original to Disney Sea. Disney spent a whopping 2.7 billion US dollars to create this world of magic and entertainment. <laughs> Disneyland Japan draws about 17 million people a year, and this is far more than any other theme park in the world. The creators of Disney Sea hope that it is similarly successful. Those who visit the park always seem impressed. The original Disneyland was created mainly for children. But Disney Sea will also attract adults, both in the area of entertainment and with great restaurants.
People can drink beer, wine and other alcoholic beverages while they sit in the restaurants and cafes overlooking the harbour. They can even watch Venetian gondolas glide through the park's canals. The rides focus more on nature and the earth or on culture rather than popular Disney characters. But despite Disney Sea's more mature image, it still mainly caters for the young and the young at heart. Another great place to visit if you're into rides is Dodenpa, the world's fastest roller coaster. If you keep your eyes open, you can get some great panoramic views of Japan's highest mountain, Mount Fuji. The operators of Dodonpa say they wanted to recreate something akin to a rocket being launched into outer space, and they may have succeeded. The adrenaline rush is over in about a minute, but it takes a little longer for heartbeats to return to normal, so the ride is aptly named. Dodonpa means the sound of the racing heartbeat. The operators say the fear element of the ride, which cost 2.4 million US dollars to build, have made the ride a main attraction of the park. People who board Dodonpa are not told to hold on to their hats, instead they are instructed to leave hat, bags and glasses in lockers as they may be lost. The car shoots out of the tunnel and hits 172 kilometers per hour, or 107 miles per hour, in 1.8 seconds. Those who are brave enough to ride Dodonpa are guaranteed to feel the G-force, which pulls at a maximum of 4.25 times that of the Earth's gravity. The car swings in a wide curve through Fuji Kyu Highland Amusement Park. Another highlight is hurtling up a 52 metre high tower before plunging down the near 90 degree slope to experience a free fall. This is a roller coaster that goes at unprecedented speeds and is surely a must see for adrenaline junkies. Tourists are invading the rolling countryside of the Yorkshire Dales in England, which traditionally is a place of coal mining and agriculture. But nestled in the valleys is a thriving small business, which had humble beginnings in this barn in the 1970s. Today, three moves later, the tea pottery has earned a reputation for its appealing products, many defying belief that they can be used to pour tea. The tea pottery is the brainchild of husband and wife team, Judy and Martin Bibby. Their teapots proved a hit, which started a unique tourist attraction. And a unique way to see the tea pottery is in the touring hotel. This hotel on wheels can sleep and shower a group of eight in comfort and is a novel way of seeing the Yorkshire Dales. This is a group of American tourists who have travelled out from London just to see this amazing display of creativity. Part of the attraction is the fact that visitors can watch production and have a cup of tea in the shop afterwards. The designs spring from the fertile mind of Judy Bibby. Leafing through hundreds of magazines for inspiration, she looks for icons. Judy creates 10 to 14 new designs each year. A bestseller and favourite of Judy's is the bellhop. He came to her in a flash while she was doodling on the telephone. Judy is most proud of these hapless removal men, but admitted it was a difficult production design. But she was convinced it would be popular. She based the teapot's design on the workman's legs because the piece of furniture that they're carrying which is a chest of drawers, is up in the air, so it had to balance on the workman's legs for the teapot to actually work. This glittering finale is a week in the making. 
It's hard to believe its genesis begins like this. Slip is poured into these block and case moulds. The magic happens inside. Once the blocks have been tipped up and the excess slip poured out, the plaster mould absorbs the slip's moisture and leaves a thin skin of clay on the inside impression of the mould. The teapots are now very delicate, almost like leather. The excess of the spouts are nipped off and the pots left to dry overnight. Meantime, the sponged and fettled pots are loaded into the kiln and fired overnight at a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius. After the fired items have cooled completely, the decoration begins. First, the pots are sprayed with underglaze paint. This dull grey colour will fire to a royal blue. Areas that need special attention are hand painted. This dunking into liquid glass gives the pot its jacket. When the glaze is fired, it seals in the colours and makes a glossy, non-porous item. Back inside, the pots move into their final phases. Parts that need to be shiny are painted with a silver or gold solution suspended in alcohol. The final firing makes them glisten. The written details, labels and product names are transferred on. These melt onto the pots in the final firing. Lastly, the decorations are glued onto the body of the pot and it's ready for purchase. With some 80 designs available by mail order or via the internet, there's strong demand for the pots in Russia, Iceland, Singapore and Hong Kong. The quirky images have caught the eye of TV producers and the Bibby's teapots have been spotted on the sets of The Golden Girls and Absolutely Fabulous, to name a few programs. Martin and Judy say teapots are a great creative palette for ideas and they love seeing other people enjoy them. So if you're interested in pottery, be sure to visit the tea pottery. Join us again when we next trek the globe and explore fabulous and exciting holiday destinations. For further information regarding any story on this episode, log on to www.pbtv.com.au. This program is proudly supported by PATA and Always Dive Australia. <laughs>